The Ant and the Dove A dove saw an ant fall into a brook. The ant struggled in vain to reach the bank, and in pity the dove dropped a blade of straw close beside it. Clinging to the straw like a shipwrecked sailor to a broken spar, the ant floated safely to shore. Soon after, the ant saw a man getting ready to kill the dove with a stone. But just as he cast the stone, the ant stung him in the heel so that the pain made him miss his aim, and the startled dove flew to safety in a distant wood. The moral of the story is, a kindness is never wasted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Ants and the Grasshopper One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants were bustling about in the warm sunshine. Drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer. When a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food, whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. Making music, were you? they cried. Very well, now dance. And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. The moral of the story is, there's a time for work and a time for play. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. Belling the Cat the mice once called a meeting to decide on a plan to free themselves of their enemy, the cat. At least they wished to find some way of knowing when she was coming, so they might have time to run away. Indeed, something had to be done for they lived in such constant fear of her claws that they hardly dared stir from their dens by night or day. Many plans were discussed, but none of them was thought good enough. At last, a very young mouse got up and said, I have a plan that seems very simple, but I know it will be successful. All we have to do 
is to hang a bell about the cat's neck. When we hear the bell ringing, we will know immediately that our enemy is coming. All the mice were much surprised that they had not thought of such a plan before. But in the midst of the rejoicing over their good fortune, an old mouse arose and said, I will say that the plan of the young mouse is very good. But let me ask one question. Who will bell the cat? The moral of the story is, it is one thing to say that a thing should be done, but quite a different matter to do it. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Boy and the Filberts A boy was given permission to put his hand into a pitcher to get some filberts. But he took such a great fistful that he could not draw his hand out again. There he stood, unwilling to give up a single filbert, and yet unable to get them all out at once. Vexed and disappointed, he began to cry. My boy, said his mother, be satisfied with half the nuts you have taken, and you will easily get your hand out. Then, perhaps, you may have some more filberts some other time. The moral of the story is, do not attempt too much at once. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys were playing one day at the edge of a pond in which lived a family of frogs. The boys amused themselves by throwing stones into the pond so as to make them skip on top of the water. The stones were flying thick and fast, and the boys were enjoying themselves very much. However, the poor frogs in the pond were trembling with fear. At last, one of the frogs, the oldest and bravest, put his head out of the water and said, Oh, please, dear children, stop your cruel play. Though it may be fun for you, it means death to us. The moral of the story is, always stop to think whether your fun may not be the cause of another's unhappiness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Bundle of Sticks A certain father had a family of sons who forever quarreled. No words he could say did the least good. So he cast about in his mind for some very striking example that should make them see that discord would lead them to misfortune. One day, when the quarreling had been much more violent than usual, and each of the sons was moping in a surly manner, 
he asked one of them to bring him a bundle of sticks. Then, handing the bundle to each of his sons in turn, he told them to try to break it. But although each one tried his best, none was able to do so. The father then untied the bundle and gave the sticks to his sons to break one by one. This they did very easily. My sons, said the father, do you not see how certain it is that if you agree with each other and help each other, it will be impossible for your enemies to injure you? But if you are divided among yourselves, you will no longer be no stronger than a single stick in that bundle. The moral of the story is, in unity is strength. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Chicken and the Fox one bright evening, as the sun was sinking on a glorious world, a wise old chicken flew into a tree to roost. Before he composed himself to rest, he flapped his wings three times and crowed loudly. Just as he was about to put his head under his wing, his beady eyes caught a flash of red and a glimpse of a long pointed nose, and there, just below him, stood Master Fox. Have you heard the wonderful news? cried the fox in a very joyful and excited manner. What news? asked the chicken very calmly. But he had a funny feeling inside him, for you know he was very much afraid of the fox. Your family and mine and all other animals have agreed to forget their differences and live in peace and friendship from now on forever. Just think of it. I simply cannot wait to embrace you. Do come down, dear friend, and let us celebrate the joyful event. How grand, said the chicken. I certainly am delighted at the news. But he spoke in an absent way, and stretching up on tiptoes, seemed to be looking at something afar off. What is it you see, asked the fox, a little anxiously. Why, it looks to me like a couple of dogs coming this way. They must have heard the good news. And, but the fox did not wait to hear more. Off he started on a run. Wait, cried the chicken. Why do you run? The dogs are friends of yours now. Ah, uh, yes, answered the fox, but they might not have heard the news. Besides, I have a very important errand that I had almost forgotten about. The chicken smiled as he buried his head in his feathers and went to sleep, for he had succeeded in outwitting a very crafty enemy. The moral of the story is, 
the trickster is easily tricked. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Crow and the Pitcher In a spell of dry weather, when the birds could find very little to drink, a thirsty crow found a pitcher with a little water in it. But the pitcher was high and had a narrow neck, and no matter how he tried, the crow could not reach the water. The poor thing felt as if he must die of thirst. Then an idea came to him. Picking up some small pebbles, he dropped them into the pitcher one by one. With each pebble, the water rose a little higher until at last it was near enough so he could drink. The moral of the story is, in a pinch, a good use of our wits may help us out. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Dog and His Reflection A dog, to whom the butcher had thrown a bone, was hurrying home with his prize as fast as he could go. As he crossed a narrow footbridge, he happened to look down and saw himself reflected in the quiet water, as if in a mirror. But the greedy dog thought he saw a real dog carrying a bone much bigger than his own. If he had stopped to think, he would have known better. But instead of thinking, he dropped his bone. and he sprang at the dog in the river, only to find himself swimming for dear life to reach the shore. At last he managed to scramble out, and as he stood sadly, thinking about the good bone he had lost, he realized what a stupid dog he had been. The moral of the story is, it is very foolish to be greedy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Farmer and the Stork A stork of a simple and trusting nature had been asked by a party of cranes to visit a field that had been newly planted. But the party ended dismally with all the birds entangled in the meshes of the farmer's net. The stork begged the farmer to spare him. Please let me go, he pleaded. I belong to the stork family, who you know are honest and birds of good character. Besides, I did not know the cranes were going to steal. You may be a very good bird, answered the farmer, but I caught you with the thieving cranes. And you will have to share the same punishment with them.
The moral of the story is, you are judged by the company you keep. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Fox and the Grapes A fox one day spied a beautiful bunch of ripe grapes hanging from a vine trained along the branches of a tree. The grapes seemed ready to burst with juice, and the fox's mouth watered as he gazed longingly at them. The bunch hung from a high branch, and the fox had to jump for it. The first time he jumped, he missed it by a long way. So he walked off a short distance and took a running leap at it, only to fall short once more. Again and again he tried, but in vain. Now he sat down and looked at the grapes in disgust. What a fool I am, he said. Here I am, wearing myself out to get a bunch of sour grapes that are not worth gaping for. And off he walked, very, very scornfully. The moral of the story is, there are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Frogs and the Ox An ox came down to a pool to drink. As he splashed heavily into the water, he crushed a young frog into the mud. The old frog soon missed the little one and asked his brothers and sisters what had become of him. A great big monster, said one of them, stepped on little brother with one of his huge feet. Big was he, said the old frog, puffing herself up. Was he as big as this? Oh, much bigger, they cried. The frog puffed up still more. He could not have been bigger than this, she said. But the little frogs all declared that the monster was much, much bigger. And the old frog kept puffing herself out more and more until all at once she burst. The moral of the story is do not attempt the impossible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The frogs who wished for a king. The frogs were tired of governing themselves. 
They had so much freedom that it had spoiled them. They did nothing but sit around, croaking in a bored manner and wishing for a government that could entertain them with the pomp and display of royalty and rule them in a way to make them know they were being ruled. No milk and water government for them, they declared. So they sent a petition to Jupiter, asking for a king. Jupiter saw what foolish creatures they were, but to keep them quiet and make them think they had a king, he threw down a huge log, which fell into the water with a great splash. The frogs hid themselves among the reeds, and grasses, thinking the new king to be some fearful giant. But they soon discovered how tame and peaceable King Log was. In a short time, the younger frogs were using him for a diving platform, while the older frogs made him a meeting place where they complained loudly to Jupiter about the government. To teach the frogs a lesson, the ruler of the gods now sent a crane to be king of Frogland. The crane proved to be a very different sort of king from old King Log. He gobbled up the poor frogs right and left. They soon saw what fools they had been. In mournful croaks, they begged Jupiter to take away the cruel tyrant before they should all be destroyed. How now, cried Jupiter, are you not yet content? You have what you asked for, and so you have only yourselves to blame for your misfortunes. The moral of the story is, be sure you can better your condition before you seek to change. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Gnat and the Bull A gnat flew over the meadow with much buzzing for so small a creature and settled on the tip of one of the horns of a bull. After he had rested a short time, he made ready to fly away. But before he left, he begged the bull's pardon for having used his horn for a resting place. You must be very glad to have me go now, he said. It's all the same to me, replied the bull. I did not even know you were there. The moral of the story is, we are often of greater importance in our own eyes than in the eyes of our neighbor. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Hare and the Tortoise A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? he asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the tortoise, and I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. The hare was much amused at the idea of running a race with the tortoise, but for the fun of the thing, he agreed. 
So the fox, who had consented to act as judge, marked the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight, and to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculous it was for him to try a race with a hare, he lay down beside the course to take a nap until the tortoise should catch up. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steadily, and after a time, passed the place where the hare was sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully, and when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare now ran his swiftest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. The moral of the story is, the race does not always go to the swiftest. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Heron A heron was walking sedately along the bank of a stream. His eyes were on the clear water, and his long neck and pointed bill were ready to snap up a likely morsel for his breakfast. The clear water swarmed with fish, but Master Heron was hard to please that morning. No small fry for me, he said. Such scanty fare is not fit for a heron. Now a fine young perch swam near. No, indeed, said the heron. I wouldn't even trouble to open my beak for anything like that. As the sun rose, the fish left the shallow water near the shore and swam below into the cool depths toward the middle. The heron saw no more fish, and very glad was he at last to breakfast on a tiny snail. The moral of the story is, do not be too hard to suit, or you may have to be content with the worst or with nothing at all. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Kid and the Wolf A frisky young kid had been left by the herdsman on the thatched roof of a sheep shelter to keep him out of harm's way. The kid was browsing near the edge of the roof when he spied a wolf and began to jeer at him making faces, and abusing him to his heart's content. I hear you, said the wolf. And I haven't the least grudge against you for what you say or do. When you are up there, it is the roof that's talking, not you. The moral of the story is, do not say anything at any time that you would not say at all times. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you... The Lion and the Mouse A lion lay asleep in the forest, 
his great head resting on his paws. A timid little mouse came upon him unexpectedly, and in her fright and haste to get away, ran across the lion's nose. Roused from his nap, the lion laid his huge paw angrily on the tiny creature to kill her. Spare me, begged the poor mouse. Please let me go, and some day I will surely repay you. The lion was much amused to think that a mouse could ever help him, but he was generous and finally let the mouse go. Some days later, while stalking his prey in the forest, the lion was caught in a hunter's net. Unable to free himself, he filled the forest with his angry roaring. The mouse knew the voice and quickly found the lion struggling in the net. Running to one of the great ropes that bound him, she gnawed it until it parted, and soon the lion was free. You laughed when I said I would repay you, said the mouse. Now you see that even a mouse can help a lion. The moral of the story is, a kindness is never wasted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Mother and the Wolf Early one morning, a hungry wolf was prowling around a cottage at the edge of a village when he heard a child crying in the house. Then he heard the mother's voice say, Hush, child, hush. Stop your crying or I will give you to the wolf. Surprised but delighted at the prospect of so delicious a meal, the wolf settled down under an open window, expecting every moment to have the child handed out to him. But though the little one continued to fret, the wolf waited all day in vain. Then, toward nightfall, he heard the mother's voice again as she sat down near the window to sing and rock her baby to sleep. There, child, there. The wolf shall not get you. No, no. Daddy is watching, and Daddy will kill him if he should come near. Just then, the father came within sight of the home, and the wolf was barely able to save himself from the dogs by a clever bit of running. The moral of the story is, do not believe everything you hear. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Ox and the Wheels An ox 
was drawing a heavily loaded wagon along a miry country road. He had to use all his strength to pull the wagon, but he did not complain. The wheels of the wagon were of a different sort, though the task they had to do was very light compared with that of the ox. They creaked and groaned at every turn. The poor ox, pulling with all his might to draw the wagon through the deep mud, had his ears filled with the loud complaining of the wheels. And this, as you may well know, made his work so much the harder to endure. Silence, the ox cried at last, out of patience. What have you wheels to complain about so loudly? I am drawing all the weight, not you, and I am keeping still about it besides. The moral of the story is, they complain the most who suffer the least. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Owl and the Grasshopper The owl always takes her sleep during the day. Then after sundown, when the rosy light fades from the sky and the shadows rise slowly through the wood, out she comes, ruffling and blinking from the old hollow tree. Now her weird hoo 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 echoes through the quiet wood, and she begins her hunt for the bugs and beetles frogs and mice she likes so well to eat. Now there was a certain old owl who had become very cross and hard to please as she grew older, especially if anything disturbed her daily slumbers. One warm summer afternoon, as she dozed away in her den in the old oak tree, a grasshopper nearby became a joyous, began a joyous but very raspy song. Get away from here, sir, she said to the grasshopper. Have you no manners? You should at least respect my age and leave me to sleep in quiet. But the grasshopper answered saucily that he had as much right to his place in the sun as the owl had to her place in the old oak. Then he struck up a louder and still more rasping tune. The wise old owl knew quite well that it would do no good to argue with the grasshopper, nor with anybody else for that matter. Besides, her eyes were not sharp enough by day to permit her to punish the grasshopper as he deserved. So she laid aside all hard words and spoke very kindly to him. Well, sir, she said, if I must stay awake, I am going to settle right down to enjoy your singing. Now that I think of it, I have a wonderful cider here, sent me from Olympus, of which I am told Apollo drinks before he sings to the high gods.
please come up and taste this delicious drink with me. I know that it will make you sing like Apollo himself. The foolish grasshopper was taken in by the owl's flattering words. Up he jumped to the owl's den. But as soon as he was near enough so the old owl could see him clearly, she pounced upon him and ate him up. The moral of the story is, do not let flattery throw you off your guard against an enemy. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Plane Tree Two travelers, walking in the noonday sun, sought the shade of a wide-spreading tree to rest. As they lay looking up among the pleasant leaves, they saw that it was a plane tree. How useless is the plane, said one of them. It bears no fruit whatever, and only serves to litter the ground with leaves. Ungrateful creatures, said a voice from the plane tree. You lie here in my cooling shade, and yet you say I am useless. Thus, ungratefully, O Jupiter, do men receive their blessings. The moral of the story is, our best blessings are often the least appreciated. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe before you go. The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse A town mouse once visited a relative who lives in the country. For lunch, the Country Mouse served wheat stalks, roots, and acorns with a dash of cold water for drink. The town mouse ate sparingly, nibbling a little of this and a little of that, and by her manner, making it plain that she ate the simple food only to be polite. After the meal, the friends had a long talk, or rather, the town mouse talked about her life in the city while the country mouse listened. They then went to bed in a cozy nest in the hedgerow and slept in quiet and comfort until morning. In her sleep, the country mouse dreamed she was a town mouse with all the luxuries and delights of city life that her friend had described to her. So the next day, when the town mouse asked the country mouse to go home with her to the city, she gladly said yes. When they reached the mansion in which the town mouse lived, they found on the table in the dining room the leavings of a very fine banquet. There were sweetmeats and jellies, pastries, cheeses, the most tempting foods that a mouse can imagine. But just as the country mouse was about to nibble a dainty piece of pastry, she heard a cat mew loudly and scratch at the door. In great fear, the mice scurried to a hiding place, where they lay quite still for a long time, hardly daring to breathe.
When at last they ventured back to the feast, the door opened suddenly, and in came the servants to clear the table, followed by the house dog. The country mouse stopped in the town mouse's den, only long enough to pick up her carpet bag and umbrella. You may have luxuries and dainties that I have not, she said as she hurried away. But I prefer my plain food and simple life in the country. With the peace and security that go with it. The moral of the story is, poverty with security is better than plenty in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe before you go.